the broadcast is live, allegedly. <laughs> Tell me if you can hear me. I'm doing it with my headset as not to be quite, I don't want to be disruptive. Oh, yeah, my wife is here. <laughs> so, yeah, let me know if the audio works. Um, I think it's working. I did a test. Cross my fingers that it actually works. I said secret location. I'm going to let people just look around and figure out maybe where I'm from. So, uh, that's it. Definitely, I got, I, I, I do have internet here, but my 5G is faster. So, this is all being looped through my phone. So, hopefully, it's work. The video is going to get goofy sometimes. That's kind of the thing. You're goofy sometimes. Uh, it sounds like the laptop's being used instead, a little laggy. I can switch to the laptop. Um, hold on. This is the laptop. So you should probably hear it differently now. This is if I do it from the laptop. I don't know which one's better. This is laptop. This one's my phone. Or do they sound the same? This is the challenge of doing a live stream remote. <laughs> so... Laptop voice quality is better. Interesting. Hmm. Let's try this. We switch to the phone. Is the audio better now? Because now I'm on the phone, but not on my headset. So... Someone tell me if this audio is good before we continue on with the stream. Take the headset off. Headset, definitely a bad idea. Way better on laptop. Still tinny on the phone. Just use your laptop. Okay, then. I'll use the laptop. I didn't realize the laptop sounded that good. I can definitely do that. Oh, we'll switch. Uh... So is everyone confirming the laptop has got better audio quality? Not, okay, laptop is better. I think I got enough votes for laptop. Cool, I thought doing it from, I, if I use both, you end up with the double audio. All right, now I'm on the laptop. Ooh. All right, I turned off the one on the phone. There we go. Uh, laptop for the win. So no problem. It's really weird. The phone is um, cutting in and out. But here, I'll actually, I was going to do show around the room here. I can do this with the laptop. Hopefully that'll work. Because um, I said secret location. I was going to walk up uh, the stairs over here. Give you guys an idea of where I'm at. Know my surroundings? Yeah. All right. Oh. All right. Yeah. If someone's good at open source intelligence. <laughs> there we go. They can try to figure out where I'm at. Yeah, a little lag. I'm, uh, it's dicey where I'm at. We'll just say that as far as that goes. Losing connection. But we're going to catch up. This is what I was trying it for my phone. My phone has 5G. Is it better now? I think I'm still live. Let's look at the live stream. There we go. All right. <laughs> You're still live. Yes. The webcam looks bad. That's one problem is the webcam's really crappy, but apparently the audio is better, which shocks me. I would assume my phone had better audio, but for uh, reasons unknown, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I tried hotspotting it. It actually was worse that way, but my phone 5G works good. Go figure. So VMware, 
if anyone hasn't seen the announcement, uh, VMware got bought. I figured that's an interesting topic to talk about here. Yes, potato camera today because I'm remote. Hi from Austria. Actually, we had a hi from uh, can't land. Um, where else did I see? I see Netherlands in here. Got people from all over the place. Uh, where else? I'm trying to say hi to everyone because I'll I'll see who guesses where I'm at. <laughs> Feel free to keep guessing. Good morning from Australia, the land down under. Awesome. Denmark. Yeah, if the um I would be able to use the video from the phone, but the audio from the laptop, but they would be way out of sync with each other because there's a there's about a two second lag. So I think that would only annoy probably a lot of people. You're in an addict. Yes, <laughs> kind of. It's it's a hotel room in an addict. You're not wrong about that part. <laughs> that part you're correct about. I'm technically in an attic. So, hey, Alexis. Hello from Portugal. Awesome. Uh, this is not in the UP of Michigan. I'm a lot further away than that. I am. I'm not in the state of Michigan. How, how's that? Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Not a ski resort. I'm not much of a skier, yeah, so we don't, ski. we don't ski. Yeah, the hotel is part of the clue. You know, I let's just share a photo, and maybe that'll help figure out where I'm at. I'll give a rooftop photo because that might help. We'll just drop that in here real quick. This is kind of fun while more people join the stream. There's a rooftop photo. Maybe. There we go. <laughs> oh, let's see. Yes, Alexis, we will be coming back home. <laughs> So when, oh, when, uh, soon. <laughs> uh, here's a fun one. The, uh, we had to ride in. That's how narrow the elevator is. You can't even completely turn yourself in it. So these are all kinds of fun, fun clues before we talk about some tech stuff, <laughs> but don't worry. We're going to get to tech because I have a few things I want to talk about. Uh, it's probably enough clues for now. But we can talk about this mess. So let's get back into the tech topic here. Not Maine, further south. Further, we went We went south. Well, don't give them too many clues. Yeah. It's going to make it easier for them to guess. Yeah, uh, further south. But, yeah. Uh, here's, here's a fun... Here's a hint. Tom doesn't have a passport, so <laughs> we didn't leave the United States. But, ooh, you're a lot closer. You're, Ian here is a lot closer, say, in Savannah. But uh, this little device here is something I want to talk about. I'm almost done with my review. Oh, Alexis says bring back a gift. Okay. All right. <laughs> but... Um, on the tech topic here, I have a lot of things I'm working on reviewing, including the uh, Ingen kind of water? Uh, Ingenious Switch. And the uh, Ingenious Switch has been pretty simple. Uh, I've had a few questions back and forth with them, but uh, that review, I was actually going to get it done before I left, uh, but I'll have, it, I'll have it published next week. Oh, Louisiana. More specific. Yeah. That, well, you got the state right.
box here. Did we lose the internet completely? Oh, it's back. Oh, this live stream is rough. The internet's not working yeah. great here. We're back now. Yeah, not Pigeon Forge. Yeah, we're, we're actually, we're in. Yeah, well, there we go. Someone figured it out. Well, you give them enough hints. Yeah, you give them enough hints. Hey, why not? <laughs> we got people figuring it out. Awesome. All right. Well, tell your, ask them to suggest places. They have any good suggestions? They need, they yeah, they need more Wi-Fi here. Um, they need, they, the Wi-Fi, but this place is also really, really old. So I know, I know the challenge is very personally what it takes to put Wi-Fi in really, really old buildings. So, and you say you like the ingenious access points. Uh, the ingenious system has been so far not too bad to work with. Um, we'll have some cocktails later, so we'll, we'll do that. We'll deal with that part later in the day. It's too early for cocktails here. Uh, it's one hour behind. It's uh, three thirty here. It's three thirty here. It's four thirty Eastern time uh, where I'm usually at. What time zone is this? The one after Eastern. The one after <laughs> Eastern. I think this is the time zone Willie Howe was in. <laughs> Yes, it, yeah, whatever is central time, maybe? I don't know. I'm not not an expert on time zones. I just let the phone tell me what time zone I'm in. Anyways, but uh, I'm reviewing the ingenious cloud system. I'm reviewing the um <laughs> Willie figure. Yeah, we're in yeah, Willie's central. time. It's central central time. time. But the the cool thing about the ingenious that I like so far, and I'm not a hundred percent on everything, but it looks like even when you adopt it uh, to their cloud platform and it first locks out the local act, local interface, but there's a way you can have it control both. So that's part of the review I'm working on that. Yes, it does have a cloud activation. It's really simple to do um, for all you have to do is drop the serial number in because by default, the device wants to beacon out to their cloud if you don't adopt it to the cloud, you can use it as a standalone device and it works fine, but then you can uh, adopt it to the cloud, control it, see it there. And I'm got to go through some of the different features they have in the cloud. Uh, but so far th the basics are all there, like your VLAN settings and everything else. But I like that they still give you the option for local control. And that's actually a pretty huge thing. So, so far my review is going well uh, with the ingenious one. Now this is using their cloud um, I don't, I'm not clear because I've never tried it. I know they had the sky key. I, I think they're trying to push for their cloud and not their sky key platform now. So I think that's how the uh, ingenious platform is going. So that's how that's going and working. And I did test the other feature that people are going to want to know about. I don't have it in this picture here, but I have some uh, SFPs and it does. These are uh, 10 gig SFP ports. It seems they have no problem uh, with different model SFPs. I have a few more to test to make sure it doesn't complain, but I put a couple different versions in there and they seem to work perfectly fine. This is also a PoE switch with two and a half gig settings on there. So it's the EC2512FP, but that review will be done and I'll push that out next week. Um, I, I, I like the device overall. Yep, we are in the French Quarter. Uh, Courtyard of the Two Sisters is a nice place to have lunch. Uh, we already went to the aquarium, too. Awesome. All right, let's look at some of the other stuff that I'm working on reviewing. Because I want to talk about the... Doo -doo 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 -doo. Where did it go? I need... oh. No, I don't want to try and share a video of it. I'll, take a... I'll show a picture of it, maybe. That's another... These videos are going to load slow if I try to load them. But... Uh, Basically, I am reviewing the Ubiquiti uh, sensor, so I have that, and that's um that's an interesting device. I have a lot of questions about how that device works. Um, it's it's a little weird the way the Bluetooth bridging works. So I've actually I got the product itself review would have been done if I wasn't so fascinated with how the Bluetooth bridging works. So I dove into the Bluetooth bridging, and it's going to be part of my review because I'm just curious how they did it. And I figured a lot of it out. Um, 
it just works is the short answer of it, but it just works wasn't satisfying me from a security standpoint. So um, I still have some questions I want to be putting out about that, but it's going to be kind of interesting. Um, I got to get my DB uh, meter for the noise. It's not silent, um, but I don't, not silent and makes a little noise is not very objective. So I will get my meter to tell you exactly how much noise it makes. Uh, price, Google it. I don't know. Uh, look on Amazon. I don't know what the going price is for it at this moment off the top of my head. Oh, the Cisco delivery. You mean this? Yes. That's a, uh, a Cisco with a Unify for scale. <laughs> I am working on a review of the Cisco equipment. I haven't started the review. I We opened some of the stuff out in box. Um, it's definitely a pretty nice looking gear. I got to get, let me turn, that might help a little with the picture. Um, but the gear is not bad for the Cisco as far as the way it all looks. I got to dive into, and I think, the way it works for the licensing is it's free for up to 25. I got to confirm that. Um, but it, Cisco can't help but be Cisco to offer you a locally managed dashboard, but then put some limitations on there until you hit those limitations. So, yeah. And on the Unify sensor, you're absolutely right. Um, I The leak detection feature would be really cool. Right now it has humidity. It has temperature and motion and light, but it does not have a uh, ability yet, you know, to get the leak detection, which I think would be really cool. License depends on product. You are right. That's the, and that's the problem with Cisco. I actually seen a quote today, which I thought was just stupid. Uh, the CEO of Cisco was quoted saying, you know, he's upset because their stock isn't doing well. They didn't hit their earnings. So he had some quote in the, one of the, I don't know, um, publications around, was it Fortune or something? He said something along the lines of, he says the lack of demand is because of an oncoming recession. But I'm like, no, the lack of demand is because there's the Cisco is losing market share uh, and other companies are filling in the gaps because no one can figure out the Cisco licensing. Uh, well, you can figure it out. It's always expensive. It's always confusing. Um, it, it, whatever you thought you were going to pay, it's always going to be more. That's what people know about Cisco. So um, that's what's hurting their product line. I mean, yeah, I was laughing. I'm traveling. You know what? The first thing I noticed that this hotel has, not enough, but it does have all ubiquity here. And I, you know, you go around all lots of the resorts, hotels, so many places are going ubiquity. That was Cisco's dominant market for a long time. They're not, you know, we, we're doing a really big bid um, that we won. And we actually two of them now that we beat out people who are pitching Cisco stuff. We're just, you know, every time I look at it, I'm seeing another job that they used to have Cisco and they're not upselling. Uh, they're not upselling them to, you know, some new Cisco product they're swapping out and frequently ubiquity is getting the job. So that's um, yeah. Yeah. Well, the Cisco stuff, they're trying now, they got the price reasonable. So the price is coming down on some of this stuff, but they still have all the licensing fees attached to it. So even if you get the pricing right, uh, you know, if you got a bunch of crazy licensing and restrictions on them to get any of the features you want, then people aren't happy again. Uh, do, 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 do. I know companies that are buying next gen firewalls as routers because Cisco products delay shortage are completely unrealistic. Well, that's another problem. Cisco seems to be hit really hard on the delays because Cisco, the lead time on Cisco equipment is even further than the lead time on Ubiquity equipment. So there's no doubt about um, that just being, you know, really adding to Cisco's challenges. You know, first, Cisco can't get the product there fast enough. Second, Cisco um, has a expensive licensing model. So now they got two strikes against them when they're trying to get things done. Kind of as simple as that. <laughs> uh, what else was I going to pull a picture up of and talk about? This was the other thing here. Um, I've been playing a lot more, and I'm going to be doing a video on... Let's make sure I don't have anything else. Net data. I think that's all I have for the pictures. At least pictures that I'll share that are interesting to the 
relevant topics, but definitely talk about this. Actually, let me swap it over to be the local dashboard. Now, this is running on a Raspberry Pi because that's what I have access to at my house right now. Um, and we're going to say, stay to this dashboard here. Uh, if you're not familiar with net data, I've done a video on it before and, uh, they added a feature. I didn't, I, I it isn't turned on by default. Uh, so I turned it on. They have some new machine learning functions to figure out anomalies. So they have anomaly detection via machine learning. They've just got some really cool features they've added to the way this works. And it's just, I'm really impressed with just how well this works. And net data has always been cool. If you're looking for an easy to install system for monitoring your servers, your Linux workloads and being able to understand what's going on and, you know, diving into the data and saying, well, actually let's jump back. Did I have enough for two days in here? Last, let's say last day. Okay, I'll just switch to my other dashboard for the for that. So let's go connect to the cloud. Take me to the cloud. All right, because I have to switch to the other device that I have more data. This is the cloud that they have. And they're really building this up to be nice to tie all of your systems together to be able to see and then do anomaly protection. So let's go ahead and do the last two days so I can find the time I was testing. Hey, there's the test I was running. Select and zoom. So we're going to zoom to this area here. And by the way, isn't this slick how you can do this? And I was running a series of Pharonix tests. And you can do things like grab these tests here. You can do metric correlation. And it says, please select a time frame. All right, let's select a time frame for our metric correlation. Select an area. Now I think I got to expand it out further. Let me zoom out a little. No, why doesn't it let me select? I thought I had the right highlight thing. It's hard to do with this uh, mouse here. So, yeah, it should be select. Now we want to select this one. So, or I need to zoom it out more. Maybe it won't do it with data that's too old. More than 15 seconds. All right. So it should be. There we go. Find correlations. And what this is doing is when you have times when the processor was pinned for whatever reason, it can actually do correlation data and start narrowing down the uh, selection and criteria of the charts. This is just a really slick feature. Net data is just really neat how well this works. Uh, Net data compared to Zabbix. So Net data is a lot more specific than Zabbix. You're not looking at something that does monitoring and alerting in quite the same way, but it does give you, when you load the agent on each system, a lot of really cool data between those systems. I think because my internet connection here is a little laggy, it's taking a minute to do the correlation data, uh, but you get the idea. They've got some cool things in there. Okay, there it popped up. Um, so it's, it's not exactly the same thing as Zabbix, uh, but it's a really lightweight agent that gives you a lot of insight when you're trying to look at the performance of a machine, when you're looking at the IOPS, when you're looking at the CPU load. Um, I'm really just impressed with how well it works for things. And matter of fact, one thing we're going to highlight here, let me go down to like the uh, applications that's within our correlation data. I know it's going to be really small, but... Do you see how it says like PHP is what was running? Yes, I was running a PHP application that was pulling all of the CPU. Uh, it was actually a Pharonix tool. So you can kind of see the different workloads and what they were doing. This kind of gives you some of that drill down information to keep building the 
metrics correlation for it. So you can keep drilling down, narrowing down and seeing what processes might be causing some of the issues. And you're looking at things like, let's look at the networking stack for that time frame. Well, not much network activity. We've seen a lot of application activity. If we scroll down towards the bottom here, actually where it's clear, we're going to clear the results just so we can show things on here. You can even have things like your Apache loaded in here. So you can see there's not, my, I loaded Apache, but it's not doing much. I got to set it up on something that has some more demanding data in it. But it, the more demanding data you have on there, it'll even pull all your Apache metrics. It'll pull metrics for a lot of different applications. I, I'm going to have to do an updated video just to show all the new features that they added to it. Um, it's definitely really, really cool just how well this works. It's uh, definitely we're checking out. I, I definitely, um, I'm excited about doing a video. I, I may even do a video on that before I get to some of the videos on the other things because, um, you know, it's just, I was just kind of enamored with one, how easy it is to deploy set up. And then two, what you're seeing in their cloud, when you look at my nodes, here's two different nodes at two different locations that I put in here. And it was smart enough to recognize this one's operating in Zen server. This one's operating under bare metal. Then you can create custom dashboards um, for the different features that you want to track and tie it all together in one cloud interface that they have. Now, the local agent still has all this data, which is great, but to be able to tie it together with the local cloud. And as I mentioned with their machine learning uh, features that they have in there, that gives you a couple extra dimensions when we're pulling up things uh, to look for anomalies over time. I'm still figuring out, they have documentation on it. I just haven't read through all of it. And I'm actually, uh, I, I was actually reached the, the reason I'm talking about it now, um, I didn't know about the machine learning part until one of the developers uh, reached out to me on Twitter. And I was like, oh, this is actually really cool. They were talking about so, uh, how to turn it on and some new features on there. So you can say like anomaly events triggered and over certain times you can pull them all up. But hey, this is all free to play with. This is open source. Um, if you want to get started with it, just check out net data. Uh, I think their main site is just yeah, netdata.cloud for anyone who wants to uh, test it. But it's like I said, it's open source. You don't have to use their cloud, though, by the way. Um, it's You can load the local agent and never tie it anywhere and just have where you go to each local uh, interface on your systems to do this. Um, and it's also, it's not going to be the latest version. There's a discussion over on XCPNG, but this does run inside of XCPNG as well. So you can go through inside of XCPNG and use this to uh, get really cool stats on your server. So I haven't brought that up in a while. I mean, I brought it up when it first came out. It's something I've been using. Um, so if you, if you want to dive deeper into XCPNG and their data, and kind of that goes back to what I said at the very beginning, which is um, the fact that the um, the VMware being bought is probably going to bring a lot more people over to looking at XCPNG. I don't think anyone seems to be thrilled about Broadcom's purchase of VMware. So we'll see how that goes. Um, and I'm hoping it goes in the way of more and more people looking at alternatives like XCP and G, which is, you know, my personal favorite. So that part's exciting for me. <laughs> um, there is an official app for scale. And someone may point out that for a while there was a version of it for TrueNAS Core. Um, the problem is there was a memory problem on BSD. So they never, I don't know whatever happened with it. Uh, they took it out of TrueNAS Core. I, it caused an instability with a memory leak was my understanding. And it's only with the BSD that they had this problem. And so they took it out, which is a shame that someone couldn't fix it. Uh, I don't really know the details behind it because I do like it. I don't know why you would load it as an app through Docker. It's best if it runs native on a machine so it has access to all the resources on the machine. Like I pulled up the fact that it works with Apache it has to have access to those services running natively on the machine in order for that to work. So uh, I don't know how how good that would work in Docker. Um, speaking of TrueNAS scale, I was working on videos on it, and um, what I learned is if you edit if you edit the Kubernetes, it says we're going to reset the applications, which actually what it did was lock me out of the networking on it. So I'm going to reload it. Um, I'd, scale has been problematic for me, uh, to say the least. So I don't, 
I, I, um, I mean, it's neat. I, I like where they're going with it, but it's still just a little, it's a little buggy, but for those of you, and I've already had a few people tell me they've, they've started modifying it to use other things. I think they use Podman on it and something else. Um, it, it works good for that is, is why I've heard from people, but it seems to be a little bit finicky if you change too many parameters within itself. So uh, as much as I like scale, eh, there's a little bit of some challenges with it. So I, I they're going to get worked out. So this isn't me telling you not to use it type thing. It's just use it with caution. And for some people that are loving it because it has exactly it will, it has all the Docker images and that's a really cool thing. All right, well, I'm going to let this go for about 10 more minutes, um, and I'm lost. Oh, I'm back. Okay. I'll let this go for 10 more minutes because this is I'm in a less than ideal situation here <laughs> So, uh, for Wi-Fi. And I imagine as people start coming to the hotel about now and checking in, the Wi-Fi will probably degrade here a bit. <laughs> so that's uh, definitely a possibility. I wonder if the phone one got any better. Let's uh, let's try the phone one again. But I think the audio was terrible, right? Let's see if this, see if we can bring me in for the phone one before we end it here. So if we go to there. We definitely have better camera here. How's the audio? That's what we want to know. I can't hear the audio. So is the audio better now? <laughs> I see that I'm back. So let's see. Cool. So someone type if the audio is any good. Tinny again. Uh, that sucks. That's weird. Why is it so tinny on this? That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Because you'd think my phone, because it, it records beautifully. You would think it also then would do a good job on audio, but for some reason it doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> decent. <We'll go laughs> the audio is decent. Okay. This is actually my selfie stick that I use for things. Probably gets worse if I'm further away, right? Does this make it worse? Oh, my wife's taking a nap. I'm, I put her to sleep. I'm so boring, I guess. <laughs> Compression during streaming. Yeah. Muffled. Not really. So, yeah, this is getting worse. All right, we'll switch back to the laptop to finish this. The laptop, the laptop seems to work. Oh, well, now I got to get rid of this. Cool. Weird that it's so bad on the phone. I don't understand. I am confused. All right. Note to self, don't use stream mirrored on phone. <laughs> well, the room acoustics aren't going to be good. I'm not in a sound studio like I usually am. So nonetheless, what are in the last uh, uh, seven more minutes and uh, before we end this live stream, is there any other questions people have? Probably not. Everyone's like, Tom, you sound bad in your remote. Go do something else. <laughs> Let's see, we'll pull up net data, Cisco, the cloud for that. Um, what else was there? I'm trying to think. To, to do to do more of the Cisco stuff. Oh, I can finally. I don't have a lot of video on it, but I can talk about some of the things. I, I have a couple projects that we finished wiring uh, that I'll be able to talk about soon. So, oddly, they told me I couldn't talk about the attic I was in, which I thought was weird. But we did do a good job of wiring a place, and I did. I have some photos of it. We have a few wiring jobs we completed um, that I'll be talking about soon. So those are those are up and coming. Those take a lot more to edit. Are you able to get any hardware from Unify yet? When it pops up, we buy it. You no, know, that's the best we can do. 
Um, whenever, whenever it shows up, so people ask, how do we get so much stuff from Unify? Um, whenever it pops up, we buy boxes of it, lots of boxes of it. We buy all of it. Um, we watch the Unify site, me and my staff do, uh, all of us, we cumulatively, we, we have a, uh, a knockdown list of everything we need to buy. And as soon as we buy it, we'll buy everything that's in, in, in the carts or, uh, available to us, which it's kind of annoying. They're only let us buy like 50, 50 devices at a time, but Hey, 50 devices at a time, eventually we'll get to the numbers we need. Cause some of the, I think one of the jobs we need like 300 of them or 400 of them. Yeah, it's, it's a challenge getting all this stuff. It's actually become a logistical problem. Um, you know, just, it, it's not, I, I rather just order it and it be here. The good old days were great when I did that. Like when I wanted 300 or 400 access points, I ordered three or 400 access points. Those days are gone. So we, we are, um, we are a mere bunch of peasants uh, running around clicking on the order button every time something shows up in stock. <laughs> so yeah, there's no there's no secrets to it. Um, it's just a lot of this. <laughs> oh, great. You enjoyed my talk with uh, David. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, I still have at least one more video in the pipe. I don't know when it'll be released that me and David already did. It's a matter of editing it uh, on his side. So don't ask me, you know, it's just stuff me and David are working on. And uh, me and David are planning some more videos in the future. So I uh, definitely, me and him get along great. Um, we're going to start working together on a few ideas. So uh, David has just got a wonderful, he's a wonderful resource for uh, knowledge on all kinds of networking things. So, you know, the whole, uh, all and, and cybersecurity and everything else. So David's a um, really great for uh, working together on that. So more coming soon. Yeah, that's, um, where was the other boxes at Cisco? Oh, uh, this is, um, more, more boxes. Actually, this is, we had a bunch of these cameras too. So there's more ubiquity boxes. Uh, someone pointed out that, that my ad, I posted these on Twitter. And my, someone's like, your address is on there. I'm like, my address is on my website too. So if you're wondering where all these are, there's no secrets here. You can scan my boxes. We are at, there is our address right there <laughs> for anyone wondering. You know, like their keystone blanks? They're pretty cool. All right. So two more minutes. Any other final questions before I wander off? Because uh, it's time to go wander around this area here. Got to go explore. Do a lot of walking or something. But the um, check out the net data. Uh, hold on. Are you using Amcrest for installs or personally? Uh, both. We, we've been installing a lot of these uh, Amcrest cameras. I think that's what this one is, isn't it? Yep, that's an Amcrest. Um, yeah, I really like the Amcrest. We've been using them. Uh, it's They're solid. You know what I mean? Like, I don't really have any complaints about them. I've talked a lot about them um, because we use them for all my... Camera systems. Oh, we got to log into this. So hold on. Because I've talked about this. I have a couple of videos on this topic overall. It's my. Um, surveillance system at home. Let's we'll see if this breaks anything. Hopefully it doesn't. Oh, there you go. Looks like it all loaded and didn't destroy the stream. <laughs> but yeah, that's these these are Amcrest cameras I have at home. I've got a video where I talk about these. So um 
The, the Camcorders cameras have been great. The AI detection. If you look, I have a video on Synology Surveillance Station 9 and how to set up the advanced detection. So I'm really happy with them overall. The Amcrest ones are. Oh, yeah. The spiders are always a challenge with any camera. But, the, uh, yeah. The spider problem is still there. When spiders get, you know, it, the tampering thing went off because a spider got right on top of the camera. Really big spider. And it set off the tamper detection on it. <laughs> so there's that. Oh, yeah, people need to hit the like button. Link button, like button, we'll go with that. I'm not going to, I mean, Blue Iris seems to make some people happy. I'm not among those people. I would have to run Windows, and I don't want to run Windows. So uh, I'm not a big fan of Blue Iris. I mean, use it if it makes you happy. Uh, I don't use it. We wouldn't use it commercially at all. Synology we use commercially. So we're, I'm using Synology personally, but we do a lot of Synology deployments commercially uh, that, you know, it, as a matter of fact, with Synology Surveillance Station 9, one of the cool things they're doing is making it easier if you have multiple Synologies at multiple locations to tie them all together to a single dashboard. I don't know if Blue Iris can do that, but back to it runs Windows and creates that uh, creates kind of a problem there. You ordered some Amcrest for testing. My only real complaint is how the OSD formats the date, but that's just me being nitpicky. Um... Yeah, I don't know if you can change that or not. I, I thought you could adjust the date format in the Amcrest settings. Maybe it's not on all models. I'm a little fuzzy on that. Synology Surveillance Station is way better than Blue Iris. You know, the cool things I've seen people do is when they, there's a bunch of not natively from Blue Iris, but just a whole lot of, uh, you know, like extra plugins, I guess, for object detection. I've seen it. It's, it's not easy to do. It's not natively built in. I thought it was cool that they could get all that done with Blue Iris, but that's it. Like, cool, it's a fun project, but it's not something like easy to deploy and support commercially. So, yeah. This is what makes Blue Iris uh, right now. It's crazy flexibility. You appreciate when you really play with it. Well, and that's the problem. When I looked at the documentation, it is a lot of playing with it to make it work. It didn't seem at all intuitive or easy to set up. Um, that was my one of my hangups with it. So, you know, I, back, and of course, it required Windows to work. So that's one of my hangups as well, because then you got to figure out how to set up Windows and then set up storage and everything else versus analogies. A, you know, I never worry about Windows update breaking a analogy. So that's the different thing there. <laughs> I'm in the United States still, so there's uh there's no IPv6 here. <laughs> this is this is the United States. <laughs> that is uh IPv6. That's that's a problem I'm not going to address. <laughs> and that is what I'm gonna leave you with. <laughs> my there's my dad joke for the show. Thanks everyone for joining. Uh hit me up on the Twitters, head over to my forums. Join my business technicalities channel. I always keep that linked in here. We're uh, rolling out more and more content on that. So I'm going to start promoting it more now that we have a bunch of videos. Me and Brett doing videos. Me and Sean are doing videos. We've got guests on there. So the uh, second channel, which is linked in the description down below, um, that's going well. So for those of you that are still wondering what happened to all the business talk, we're putting it there and we're really ramping it up um, because I, you know, I, I, we have a lot to say, and uh, that's the place I'm saying it, so that we don't bore everybody here uh, on the technical side for, um, you know, the business stuff. I get it. This is the tech side, which is fine. I love the tech side, but, you know, people have questions about business, and I want to make sure I drop some knowledge out there, uh, you know, teach people how to do this and how to do things better. We actually have an interview we just did with Nigel from the Trek uh, tech tribe that'll be up in at least a couple days we'll have that interview posted uh we talk about you know starting communities online and things like that so we're, uh, definitely you know if you're into the business side of things uh, or the tech business side that we talk about that's uh, a lot of stuff we're going to talk about there updated wire guard video coming soon yes definitely that um i'm working on uh i i send everyone i'm gonna basically copy um, the way it was done, because I don't want to use NAT, I want to do a site-to-site -site video with, um, what do you call it, 
using static routes. And Christian McDonald already did the video on it. I just send people his video, but so many people want me to do the video. I said, fine, I'll do one too. Uh, that way I have one on my channel instead of referring Chris's. But Chris is in the short term, look for Christian McDonald, wire guard site to site. He did the video on how to do it. Uh, but it, it works. His video works great. So I will be doing, <clears throat> I'll be doing the same thing and uh, maybe put a couple different things on there of how to do it. But uh, so far, uh, I've been using it for a while. I, I reported a bug because there is a bug with the static routes not reloading under certain circumstances. The It may be fixed by the time I do the video, and I've been debating about doing the video when the bug is fixed um, because it causes the routes to be missing. There's a fix. There's a workaround. You just edit the route and hit save, and it fixes it. Uh, so it's one of those... There's a circumstance that creates the problem, but it's really an easy problem to have a workaround for. But if you don't understand how routing works at all, and you're just nexting and guessing, you don't know what to look for uh, with it. So that's what I'll leave you with with that. So leave your comments down below and see you later.